Uh, we'd like to say thank you to the staff for helping us to put this event together. Uh, primarily, our role as any other institution is uh, also involving in raising awareness and uh, providing uh, education to the uh, general public as a whole and most basically to the investing community. And we hope uh, this event uh, uh, will be something of uh, great uh, uh, benefit for you. Uh, no matter in what value chain of the investing uh, 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 community that you are involved in. Uh, I'm sure you or each and every one of us are very much involved in uh, the role of uh, ensuring that uh, we have a primary responsibility towards uh, accumulate, uh, uh, accumulating wealth. Okay? Wealth creation is, is quite essential uh, no matter uh, whatever is our age, whether we are young, uh, uh, mid-young, uh, uh, or uh, elderly or senior citizen, uh, wealth is quite significant and important to us. So wealth creation is uh, important. And uh, from the creation then you go through a process of uh, see how you can grow it further. Okay. And uh, of course you reach a stage where you kind of uh, uh, tap it off and then uh, preserving or protecting that wealth is also essential. But no matter where, in, in which cycle you are involved in, one of the significant facts that you need to ensure that you have with you as a philosophy in undertaking your activity, and not just in investing, but in any other activity as well, in your, in your lifestyle on a daily basis, is the fact that you need to manage risk. Okay? Risk is about anywhere, okay? no matter whether it's in the house, outside the house or wherever you go, it is always there. And it is not just something that is around us, but it involves in all the activities that involve it. More so when you are involving in investing, you know, involved in the activities such as trading. So risk management is quite significant. And therefore, the products that we had, had Bursa Malaysia derivatives, derivatives itself, it, it, it sounds very complicated and, 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 and uh, confusing, okay? But when we break it down, it's uh, essential simple products that are made available to help you to manage risk and to protect your portfolio and to ensure that it can go through a path of uh, steady and, and, and sustainable growth. That's what we are looking for. So as an introduction uh, to Bursa Malaysia Derivatives and follow on uh, to that, uh, we are coming up with a new product next week. Uh, Mr. Jeffrey Tan uh, uh, will provide more details on that. And then we'll provide some uh, uh, demo on, on, on how you can use this product so that you have more, a bit more of a hands-on experience on that. And of course, we'll then go through a, I'm sure, a quite exciting uh, Q&A session. Uh, with all of you here today. Bursa Malaysia Derivatives is a subsidiary of Bursa Malaysia and it is 75% owned by Bursa Malaysia with a 25% shareholding by CME Group. CME stands for Chicago Mercantile Exchange. This is the biggest uh, derivatives uh, exchange globally. Uh, this is headquartered in uh, uh, Chicago. And in 2009, uh, both Bursa Malaysia and uh, CME Group uh, entered into an agreement whereby they will then uh, have a partial ownership of Bursa Malaysia derivatives, with most exchanges having a common uh, thought process that there is a need to ensure there is more uh, developmental work that is done uh, uh, in this uh, part of the, of the globe in uh, Malaysia as well as in, in ASEAN. So that's primarily represents uh, uh, why CME is part of our shareholders. Now, what have we established? Okay, we have established a derivatives exchange. What is the derivatives exchange? Derivative exchange is an exchange primarily two main products. Okay, 
normally it is a futures contract and an options contract okay uh, those are merely financial contracts okay that has some relationship between two parties okay but the role of the exchange is primarily to ensure there is a fair level of playing field among all parties who are participants in that exchange so the exchange primarily facilitates the fact that we have participants be it individual or it could be corporates okay who have a need to buy certain thing some will have a need to sell something okay but here rather than buying and selling the actual physical product or physical item what you buy and sell here are merely futures contract or a financial contract that represents the value of that product okay so you don't have to if you want to sell example one of our main contract is crude palm oil if you want to sell crude palm oil you don't have to carry the crude palm oil and come to the exchange you just have to do it via a financial contract that represents the value of what you want to sell or what you want to buy so it's very facilitative in that manner so in ensuring that we facilitate how the seller and buyer come together of course nowadays it's very much more electronic base okay those days when exchange uh, derivative exchange started it used to be a uh, a outcry system in an open open pit like this okay so you have a lot of people standing in the middle and then they are shouting among each other uh, and we don't know what's going on okay but at the end of it the result is quite similar to what we have currently when it's done electronic that means buyers put in their orders sellers put in their orders at some point they match each other and then we get a, we, we, we get we then provide the information of what has been transacted so you know what's happening at any point of time yeah and in the event that if either a seller or buyer wants to go through the physical process of making delivery or taking delivery of those uh, products or contracts that they have then transacted okay that is also facilitated by the exchange okay and of course that will also be uh, compensated by the ensuing or corresponding payment that is required to reflect that completion of transaction so it starts off just like a normal paper transaction but it can end up with the actual physical transaction that is happening on the marketplace <coughs> and in addition to the trading itself we also provide ensure that we protect the interest of the seller and the buyer so therefore both seller and buyer will need to post some margin okay to the exchange so you don't have to uh, uh, if, you, if you buy a contract, you don't have to pay the full value of the contract. You just pay a margin, a small deposit to represent the interest that you have. Okay? Similarly, when you sell, you pay a small margin to reflect that you are interested in selling this amount. And this margin is then post with the exchange. Why we take the margin? Okay? We want to ensure that the completion of the transaction at the expiry of the contract is completed okay because the value of this contract that has been transacted is changing minute by minute day by day week by week okay so the contract that has been traded could be one month from today two months or three months from today so the value is changing every day every moment so therefore there is a possibility that one of these party may renegade from their contract so ensuring that doesn't happen okay what we do is that in addition to the initial margin that we take from the participants if you are losing by doing that transaction or you have bought and the value is going down then you have to top up margin okay this is to ensure that you are still committed to fulfilling the value of that contract come the expiry and therefore we are then protecting the interest of the seller who is in a way making money because of the fact that he has sold it at a higher price so that's how we balance okay 
but what you pay from initial margin plus the uh, uh, variation margin that goes along still would not be equivalent uh, to the total cost of the contract because the total cost of the contract will only come into effect when either on expiry, either by delivery or by exchange of cash between the two parties. So, we, that role, what, what we are doing in that role is actually clearing the contract. So we are helping bringing the two parties together and ensure that the interests of the two parties are taken, taken care of and therefore we clear the contracts. And when we then make payments either to or back and forth, okay, we are then doing the settlement of the contract. So trading, clearing, settlement, those are the major rules of the exchange. Okay. So how have we been doing it? Well, this is a snapshot from the year 2000. I would say it's a fairly positive direction. But of course, uh, there are always further room for growth and further uh, uh, encompassment that can be uh, provided for, for the investing community, both in terms of uh, products and also in terms of how it is usage, how, it, how one party uses this contract and ensure that there is more validation and, and more uh, 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 grabs and, and more acceptance of the contract going forward. So very briefly, a futures contract, I mentioned that you buy and sell a financial contract. Okay? A financial contract can be a futures contract or an options contract. A futures contract is very much a contract that gives you the fact that you buy or sell that particular commodity, underlying commodity. Very briefly, before I move forward more detail on futures, options contract is quite similar in nature, but except that it is not a total commitment to buy and sell, but it is just purely an obligation to buy and sell. So with an option, you have an option. Okay. Very simple as that. Whereas with the, with the futures, your future is quite sad. You, you either have to buy or sell that contract, cut the expiry of that contract. So it's quite simply explained in that manner. So it is at a predetermined price. Okay, the price is sad. Future, future time could be one month, two months, three months, one year. Or even we currently have FCPO is what, 24 or 36 months, yeah? 36 months. Ah, FCPO we have as far out as 36 months. Okay, so about three years forward. <coughs> uh, it is a standard contract. So that means everyone knows one contract, what is the value, what is the size. So it, it's well known. Uh, we also provide details of the quality and the quantity of the contract. Okay? Because we are dealing with real commodities, example, MCPO, there is a specification that we require. So when someone delivers the contract or sells the contract and decides to deliver the product, so what he needs to provide to the exchange, through, through not exactly directly to the exchange, but to the, to the buyer, is a product that meets a certain specification. So therefore, it can be physically or cash settled. So either you can deliver it by, by uh, delivering the commodity or you can then just do a cash settlement equivalent of what is the value of the transaction. It is a legal agreement that binds both the parties together. Okay? And as mentioned, it is to buy or sell the commodity. Okay? So that's what a futures contract is. And what does it really do okay, by having this futures contract? Okay. Futures contract actually very much it is started from a commodity base. Okay. That's where its origin sets from. Okay. So you find that commodities, when you go through, when you are involved in commodities, okay, you are involved in planting, you you involved in taking care of it, you harvest it, and then you need to find uh, uh, buyers for it, okay? And we very well know that you don't plan today and get the result tomorrow. And we also know that it is quite seasonal in nature. 
and it also depends on a lot of things. It depends on the sun, it depends on the rain, it depends on the wild animals nearby. There, there are a lot of variables for it. Okay? So therefore, your production is kind of skewed in a manner that a good example is, is, is how uh, the price has drained and kind of uh, been, been, been uh, fluctuating over the last two to three years. Uh, Musang King at one point, nobody talks about it, okay? <laughs> and then it went through the roof, okay? Now it's slightly stabilized back again. So that's a good example, okay? How seasonal production uh, affects price and also the fact that uh, the, the, the supply and demand uh, also influences it. And therefore, as a farmer or as a producer or even as a buyer of this commodity, okay? You want to have some form of certainty. So therefore, a financial futures contract is created for this particular commodity. And therefore, where even though you are in the stage of just planting the commodity, but if you think the price of the commodity currently is quite high or good, you can actually uh, 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 commit to that price. Therefore, you can sell the particular contract. Therefore, you are able to get that contract so therefore, when comes expiry of the contract, you either deliver your commodity or you can exchange it for the cash equivalent. And therefore, you are able to enjoy that high price that is uh, uh, made available uh, during in, in because of these changes in supply and demand that's happening. So, price hedging is an essential need of why futures is used. Next, of course, because of the fact that we bring in various parties together, so, and we have strict rules in how one behaves. Okay. Example, before you trade, you may, there is a need for you to have initial margin. So you don't simply shout whatever you want. So you, you have to commit to it. Okay. And similarly, there are other rules on, on how you trade, how you put your price, anything like that and the process of how you do it, okay? And we have intermediaries, futures brokers, who help us to ensure that all these factors of a fair and trading, uh, fair trading and level playing field among all partic participants are maintained. So each one of you, whether you're big or small, you're just equal. Nobody has an advantage over the other one. Thirdly, as mentioned, okay, if Producers can also use the WT exchange as a way to manage their cash flow. Okay? So you can use it as, as a form to do the physical trade without actually being involved in the physical trade. So example, if you are producing uh, uh, crude palm oil, okay, you have two choices of what you want to do with the crude palm oil. Either you go out and find the buyers for it, for what you are going to produce in three months' time, well, what you can do is that you can just sell this futures contract because there are buyers in the market if you like the price at that price. So come three months in the future, on the expiry of the contract, you just deliver the CPO to them. So you don't have to go through the process of looking and marketing those, 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 those uh, commodities. Okay? So it makes, helps in that manner. Equally, in the same manner, if you are buying those commodities for whatever uh, purpose that you need to use it for, you can also do the same thing. So you don't have to go and hunt for it. Okay. But the flexibility is there for the industry players to do this. Now, in addition to the hedging facility that it does, it also provides a investment opportunity. Okay. Given the fact that it relies on the fact that the price of these co contracts will move up and down dependent on what's happening with the underlying commodity or product and also depending on market conditions where the demand is supply. So therefore, this is a contract that can go up and can come down. And therefore, when there is what we see volatility, so that means price can move in one direction and can come back to reality or it can go in one direction all the way, there is opportunity for you. So that is what we say is that it's an investment opportunity that you are able to take care uh, or benefit from. And remember we talked about the fact that 
you only pay a initial margin rather than a full contract value, which is very much one of the main attractiveness of futures market. What we say is that it has a leverage effect. What it means by leverage effect? You need a small margin for a contract that has a significantly higher value of underlying. Okay? So, with this small investment, you have the probability of having that profitability that provides you a very significant ROI for that matter. But of course, this is a product that can go your way or can go against you. So if the leverage effect is very much positive when you make money, it is also very much negative when you lose money. So that's why if you're using it as a trading tool, even here, even though the, the product itself is used as a risk management tool, but you need to have risk management on risk management as well. So, so it's quite <laughs> important that we, we, we keep track of what we are doing and, and be on the, uh, keep our feet on the ground all times. Example of how this is done. Okay. This is a FKLI. FKLI is a futures contract that covers uh, the Bursa Malaysia KLCI top 30 uh, stocks. Okay. And the value of this contract is the KLCI uh, index value times RM50. So, example, current, uh, assuming current price is 1780, the index, <coughs> KLCI index is at 1780. The value of this contract is 1780 times 50, which is equivalent to 89,000, one contract, okay? But initial margin, you only need to put in 4,000 ringgit. You don't need to put in 89,000 to trade this contract. You use 4,000 ringgit, okay? So you are leveraging but 22 times, okay? That's the uh, upswing that, that is there, okay? And if the price were to rise to 1,800 example, okay, so the profit that you get, okay, that 20 times 50, you get 1,000. So the 1,000 profit that you have made from this transaction over your initial margin of 4,000, okay, this gives you a ROI of 25%. This is how leverage works, okay? So it's very uh, uh, um, sweet and nice. When, when, when you really make it, but equally, if instead of rise, this has gone down to 1760, so you make a loss of 1000, and a negative 1000 over there, you get a slightly lesser or 24 or 24.5 or uh, percent of ROI loss. Okay, so that's how it swings about. Okay. Uh, but the main thing is that it has that it provides you leverage, which enables you to have a higher ROI. All these people who come to our market, who the heck are they? Okay. As mentioned, this participant, it can be individual or it can be a corporate. Okay. It can be an asset manager, it can be an insurance company, it can be a producer, it can be a buyer, it can be a seller, anybody. But when you look at it from why they are in the market, we can group them into three segments. One, they are there to hedge their underlying activities. <coughs> or they are merely there as a speculator. Speculator here means that they are not trying to make do bad things. Okay. It's not easy to speculate actually. Okay. <laughs> manipulate maybe I can. But even that manipulate also requires a lot of things. It's not so straightforward. But speculate, you need to have a lot of skill, a lot of guts to do this as well. And thirdly, uh, arbitrages. Arbitrages are people who are looking for opportunities when there are mismatches in markets. Okay? The underlying physical market could be trading at 2,000 example, and the futures may be trading at, for whatever reason, at 2,500. That's where these arbitrages, they come in. They will buy from the physical market, real market, and then they will sell it in the 
futures market. And by them doing that process, they will then crack the market. Either the cash comes back to about 2002 and the future comes to 2002 or the other way around. Okay. So they come in to make sure market normalizes. There is no uh, ensuring, in a way, they are, they, they are gatekeeping to ensuring there is no manipulation in either of the market. These are the product suite of BMD. Mr. mentioned derivative. We have three common things. We have commodity derivative, we have equity derivative, and we have financial derivatives. Okay. The main contracts that is traded quite hotly on uh, our exchange is this FCPO, which is a crude palm oil features. And the next one is uh, uh, FKLI, which is a uh, KLCI features contract. Uh, Jeffrey will be talking in more detail of this thing that we have circled in here. It's a new contract that comes on Monday next week. Okay. And it is a mini contract on the uh, next 70 uh, of Bursa Malaysia uh, stocks that is listed. Okay. So top 30 is covered by FKLI. The next 70 is by FM70. You take FKLI, you plus FN70, you cover the top 100. Top 100 in terms of value and in terms of trading, it covers almost about 95% of what happens on Bursa Malaysia every day. Uh, these are financial derivatives which is quite uh, uh, not very uh, well used in our market given the fact that our interest rates are quite stable. Okay, so not much activity in that. Just to give you an idea what's happening with FCPO, this is a volume, the bar is the volume, okay, just to show you how it is traded, volume, a number of contracts that is traded on a monthly basis, okay. And the red line here is the open interest, okay. Open interest means these are number of contracts that is outstanding, uh, which is not uh, matched. So that means at the end of the day, uh, someone has bought a particular number of contract as has not closed out that contract. So that contract is still open. Okay. And remember, for w this is a zero sum game. Okay. So one contract that is open as a buy, there is another contract that is open as a sell. It has to be that because nobody is, is creating out of nothing. It is always two parties involved. There is a buyer, there is a seller. The exchange is merely facilitating all this. We are not involved in the trading at all. Okay. So, quite healthy open interest, reaching almost about 250,000. Okay. <coughs> Who trades this contract? Currently, it's very much the blue. This is the foreign institutions foreign guys who use CPO uh, for whatever purpose uh, or even producers from Indonesia or other parts. These are domestic institutions. These are locals. Locals are very much like traders who play a role as uh, 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 trading the market and also in a way also act as arbitrages to the market. We got fairly quite good domestic retail interest on this contract as well. So you, you have fairly good following of uh, uh, retail individuals who are also trading uh, uh, this particular contract. And a small portion of foreign retail as well. So it's very much a institutional kind of uh, uh, play of this contract. Very much supporting the underlying uh, institutional activity of corporates involved in the palm oil industry. This is the FKLI contract, okay, and in terms of value of contracts, and also in terms of uh, the, the open interest. So it's, it's fairly uh, uh, stable. Why, why we are emphasizing the word open interest? Open interest is quite significant in the manner that uh, if you have high volume, but there is no open interest, that means people are just uh, you buy the contract in the morning and you sell it in the evening. 
and then you pack and you go back. So there is no uh, commitment or there is no real usage of the product as a uh, hedging and investing uh, 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 tool. So that's why a significant or rather a, a reasonable portion of open interest is required to ensure the uh, stability and the strength of the contract is maintained. This particular contract in terms of market segment that trades this contract is very much predominantly used by foreign institutions. Foreign institutions who are investing in our equity market. These are big institutions, so therefore most of them are involved in the, in the, in the big counters, uh, uh, top 20 counters. So in order to hedge themselves as against any downside move, they use this FKLI contract uh, as, as a uh, hedge to make sure that portfolio is, is, is managed. Or they also use this contract as another way to go into the market before they actually uh, complete their transaction in the cash market. Okay? Because when you want to buy a particular uh, stock in, in our market, Okay, example, if you want to buy Maybank, okay, this solution, they, they talk in millions and things like that. You, you, you are not able to do it at one go. Okay? Sometimes not in a day. Sometimes it takes a week, sometimes two weeks. Okay? But the price is changing. So one way they can hear themselves, they like the price today. If the price maybe it is at uh, eight or nine, okay, and they like the price. So what? One way they do is that okay, they buy the FK Ally contract first, so they are locking it in. Okay, so if given the fact that Maybank is a significant contributor or participant in the FK Ally uh, uh, component of the index, okay, so if Maybank shares were to go up, the likelihood is that the index will also go up. So while waiting to buy the Maybank shares, they are buying, they are bought the KLCI contract first. So that's another way that how this is being used as well. Next portion, of course, is the domestic retail. People who are trading, just purely trading or even uh, hedging their equity exposure. Unfortunately, the domestic institutions don't use this contract very much. Okay, given the fact that our domestic institutions look like uh, uh, EPF, uh, PNB, Tabong AG, those kind of institutions. <coughs> they are merely what we call uh, 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 long-only investors. Uh, they just go to the market to buy because they, they, they have cash that comes in uh, uh, almost monthly. So what they need, they need to continue to buy and buy. Okay? And then they only do some selling activities in the, in the, in the marketplace to the end of the year to prepare themselves for dividend payment and things like that. And what they do is that they have the flexibility of choosing to sell what is making profit and what is not making profit, they just keep. And the fact that market is cyclical, if it doesn't go up this year, it will probably go up next month or next year or the following year. So they just wait. So it's a long only kind of uh, attitude that we have among the domestic institutions. So they don't use FKLI that much, but we expect uh, uh, FM70 to be more widely used uh, because the mid-size and smaller size asset managers, uh, the unit trust, I think they, they will have a bit more uh, 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 responsibility in managing risk and therefore there might be some uh, better interest from the domestic institutions. And lastly is the local or the arbitrages. And that's what I wanted to share with you all. I hope uh, I've given you some uh, good ideas about what derivatives and futures and options market is all about. Uh, thank you very much for your attention.